Yathaschodeti suryo stang yatracha gachati Tang deva sarve ripastadu Nat yeti kashchana etadvaitat On that from which the sun rises and in which it sets are fixed all deities. None ever transcends that. This is that. Moreover, yatahacha, that from which prana, that is, hiranyagarbha, udeti, rises, suryaha, the sun, yatra, where, in which prana itself, astam gachati, sets, day after day, Tam, on that, the prana which is the self, sarve devaha, all the gods, fire, etc., in the divine context, and speech, etc., in the personal context, arpitaha, are fixed like spokes on the nave of a chariot wheel for the period of existence of the universe. That prana, too, is that all-pervading Brahman, Tatu, that indeed, nakahachana, nobody whatsoever, atyeti, transcends, becomes something beyond that. This is that. Yadeveha tadamutra yadamutra tadanviha Mrityo samrityum mapnoti ya ihanane vapashyati. What indeed is here is there. Likewise, what is there is here. He who sees as though there is difference here goes from death to death. This verse counteracts the doubt that may arise in anybody's mind that the entity which exists in all beings from Brahma down to the immovable and appears as non-Brahman owing to those particular limiting adjuncts is an individual soul different from the supreme Brahman and is subject to birth and death. Yat eva iha What indeed is here? that entity which, being associated with limiting adjuncts, the body and senses as existing here in the individual, appears to the ignorant to have worldly attributes. Tut, that very entity, established in its own reality, is Amutra, there, existing in its causal condition as Brahman, which is by nature a mass of consciousness devoid of all worldly attributes. And yat amutra, that which is there in the causal condition established in itself, tat, that very thing, iha anu, is here likewise appearing diversely in conformity with the limiting adjuncts such as name and form, body and senses. It is nothing else. This being so, yaha, anyone who, deluded by ignorance, consisting in seeing differences that are natural to limiting adjuncts, pashyati, sees, perceives, iha, here in this Brahman, which is not a plurality, nana eva, as though there is difference, such as, I am different from the Supreme Self, and the Supreme Brahman is different from me, Saha, he, apnoti, gets, mrityo, mrityum, he becomes subject to repeated birth and death. Therefore, one should perceive, I am, indeed, Brahman, which is homogeneous consciousness and pervades everything through and through, like space. Namaste. So, now that we've covered how to do the meditation on the heart, we can go on with these verses that describe the nature of Brahman. Because Brahman, of course, is the object 
on which we're meditating in the heart. So verse 9 talks about how the sun rises from Brahman and it sets in Brahman. Now, he's not talking about the horizon. <laughs> he's talking rather about the source of the energy of the sun. The sun, of course, has tremendous heat and light. And where does that come from? Well, scientists have various theories about, you know, nuclear reactions and this and that. And even if that's all true, how is that arranged? Who sets up the laws of nature such that these reactions are possible? Not only possible, but extremely likely. There's a theory known as the anthropic principle, which examines the laws of nature by simulations. And they have found that if the fundamental constants and reactions of subatomic particles are changed even a little bit, it means that the universe as we know it today would be impossible. It would never work. It couldn't function. So how is it that the universe is designed slow, so cleverly that it allows the arisal and maintenance of life forms like human beings. Because human beings have a very narrow environmental range in which they can exist comfortably and thrive. And just so happens that these environmental conditions are present on the earth. Of course, humans have to go and mess with that and screw it up. But, you know, that's humans for you. So what does this mean that the sun rises and sets from Brahman? It means that Brahman is the source of the energy of the sun, directly or indirectly. Huh? And just as the light of the sun penetrates everywhere and illuminates everything, makes everything clear, so the same is true of the consciousness of Brahman. In fact, Brahman is the consciousness of all living entities, including you and me. And as soon as we accept this fact, as soon as we begin to uh, view Brahman in its proper position and in its proper relation to everything else, well, I'll let you try it and see what the result is. But I can tell you that there's a tremendous sense of relief that finally I understand how this world works. Finally, I understand what I am and that I, like the sun, am powered by Brahman, which is the ultimate supreme absolute truth. So that's the ninth verse. And now the 10th verse is very interesting. What is here is there. What is there is here. Huh? There's no difference anywhere. We tend to focus on the differences between various objects in the material world. This is called Jagrat consciousness. We've been over this a million times on this channel. <laughs> in Jagrat consciousness, the world appears real. The body appears to be the self and cause and effect and other kinds of material reactions appear to be like totally reliable, like laws of science and so on, laws of nature. But in fact, all this is simply due to the presence of Brahman. Just like the sun is his energy, so the life of all that lives is nothing but Brahman. And in fact, everything is Brahman, just covered by these upadis, limiting adjuncts. For example, even the forms of God, Ishwara, like Shiva and Vishnu and so on, are called Ishwara Twam or Isha Twam, upadi. 
That means that in their case, Brahman is covered by the concept of an all-powerful God. Whereas in our case, it's called Jivatram. Jiva means one who is born. So in our case, Brahman is covered by this upadi that makes it appear that Brahman has become a mortal being, which is born, lives, and dies. But this is not really true. It's not true because it changes. That which is born will always die. True. But what is born and what dies? <laughs> Not the self. The self is always there. Beginningless, endless, changeless, immutable, uh, unrelatable, uninferrable, unknowable, un indescribable, and so on. So we have to understand that beneath the relative, there is the absolute. And indeed, that is the foundation. That is the source. That is the root of everything. The Brahman appears as a human being. He appears as the different sense objects. He appears as the senses and the impressions from those senses. Everything is arranged by Brahman. As it's said in the Bible, not a blade of grass moves without the consent, the will of God. And so this Brahman is everywhere in everything, and really there is no difference between here and there, between this and that, between you and me. There is absolutely no difference at all because we're all Brahman. Why does Brahman do this? Often people will ask this, and they come up with various theories like, well, Brahman is bored, <laughs> and he wants some entertainment, so he creates this world with all these varying conditions and so on, uh, just for his entertainment. I think that's kind of nonsense. Or that Brahman likes to control everything, and so he creates this world of illusion, where he can be in control and enjoy uh, controlling everybody, which I think is also kind of bogus. The real reason is Brahman is monotonic. That means he is only one. There is no division in Brahman. No I, thou, no this, that, no here, there. No inside and outside. No present, past, and future. No divisions whatsoever. No boundaries. He's infinite. That's what infinite means. No boundary. Everything is limitless. So Brahman has a curiosity to see himself. That is... He wants a mirror. He wants to know himself. So how he knows himself is by allowing this world of illusion to come into being and seeing how he is reflected in the different creations, in the different beings. This is why the sun, for example, is considered a symbol of Brahman, because the sun is the most like Brahman of anything in this world. It's utterly reliable, rises every morning, sets every evening, provides energy for the whole biosphere, the whole planet, and is the source of light, intelligence, and so on. Without the sun, you know, none of this would be possible. And similarly, without Brahman, the whole universe would be impossible. Consciousness would be impossible. Everything. So, Brahman creates this universe as a way to reflect himself because he is complete and the universe is complete in its own way. It's a complete mirage. <laughs> but, like a mirror, a mirror doesn't have any choice about what it reflects. 
It simply reflects whatever is put in front of it. Now, in the same way, the material world is a reflection of Brahman as a whole. Now, the various pieces and objects within the material world are all incomplete. And that's why as beings, the jivas, those of us who are born, always feel incomplete and feel the urge to merge <laughs> with Brahman. Actually, it's not merging. It's simply realizing what we really are. We have always been Brahman. We're Brahman now, and we'll always be nothing but Brahman. Always intelligent, always conscious, always alive, always in action, doing something or other, huh? perceptive, and feeling beings. That is our nature, and that is also the nature of Brahman. Aung Tat Sat, Aung Shakti Aung, Aung Namah Shivaya.